I've often been asked to take people a tour of my workroom, so I've made this short film to show you around. I hope you enjoy it. By far the largest piece of equipment in my workroom is this rolling mill. I use this for rolling metal flatter, longer. Sometimes I put a piece of lace on the metal and put it through the rollers and it leaves behind a pattern. I also use it to lengthen wire, turn round wire into square wire or D wire for making a ring. At the back here I've got a steel neck. This I can use to place a necklace on, check that it sits evenly, doesn't fall round in a funny direction. Perhaps lightly tap on it in order to make it sit better on the neck. Then I have this vise. Uh, I put in here a stake. For this I use a hammer and hold the metal on it and hammer perhaps round there to make an anti-classic bangle or dome something to make a nice domed bangle. I have a, this here is a sandbag. I use this perhaps to put a piece of metal on and it's slightly dinted and I just gently want to tap the dint out. I can do that and then because it's lovely soft smooth leather it won't leave a mark on the back of the metal. Here I have two bangle mandrels, a round one and a oval one. They taper down and they're great for just helping me get the perfect size of bangle to fit somebody's wrist. Here I have lots more stakes to fit into that um, vise, lots of different shapes. It's good to see the soap side profile actually, you can see exactly what sort of shapes I can form. Down here I have some steel rods. I use these for making jump rings. I wrap metal around them, dependent on the size and diameter of the jump ring. Then I take the coil of silver or other metal off, use a piercing saw, saw down the middle and I have a series of jump rings to use with my work. I'm very fortunate that when I decide to look up from my workbench, I have lovely views of the Derbyshire countryside. Sometimes it's really good and I can have sunshine over here and see a rainbow in the distance. I also have a lot of collections. This is just a small sample here. I've got some leaves that I've taken out from the garden, dried and pressed in books to get the texture. And we've got at the moment some interesting starfish. These are washed up on the beach in Norfolk. Not quite sure yet what I'm going to do with them. Uh, the texture is very interesting. I might try and reproduce a tech part of the texture onto something rather than just try and reproduce the whole thing in silver. Got a lot of drawers because all jewellers never have enough tools. Um, I'm very fortunate in that I have an opportunity to go to Birmingham once a week down to the jewellery quarter to use more equipment there because I just simply haven't got everything I need in my own workroom. On my bench at the moment I'm busy working on this uh, bracelet here. Somebody liked my quince range and I have asked me if I can make a bracelet. So it's going to be a fairly heavy bracelet because it's for a man and he'd like something quite chunky. Then here I've made uh, another bracelet, the Snapple bracelet actually. I've just got to put a catch on that now and polish it in my barrel polisher. Here I've been making a quince ring and placing the settings ready to put in some stones that's a special order for somebody and that's going off to the states it's going to be a ring that fits on a small finger uh, in this box i've got lots of different bits for my drill from being able to drill down to make holes to set stones to sort of sanding away all sorts of different ones dependent on the job I have. Uh, some files, this is just a small collection of my files. 
and then moving around here I have my polishers this is a barrel polisher the one I mentioned earlier I'll probably put the uh, snaffle bracelet and the quince bracelet in there with that shot and then put it on this barreling machine and it'll go round and round and it will smooth it off and make it really bright and shiny this is my magnetic polisher put that on it annoys me and inside there are a lot of pins which get in between all the different parts of your textured silver you know it doesn't make it shiny it sort of makes it more of a matte finish uh, both of these polishers have their different uses, but I wouldn't be without either of them. Here we have my pickling bath. In fact, it's an old cook pot. But when you've been soldering silver or any other metal, or heating it up, you then have to quench it in water and then pickle it. In the old days it would be acid, but now it's safety pickle, so it's a lot safer. And over here I have my soldering bench. I have a couple of torches, different bricks, different sizes. Um, I use lots of tweezers and it takes sometimes it takes quite a lot of setting things up so they're nice and still and steady and they don't fall over when you're busy trying to solder them. This is probably one of the most delicate parts of the job. As you can see, I have it involves many different bits of equipment and different stages making jewellery. Um, <clears throat> I hope you found this interesting.